Okay, so it's weird. I've been reading a lot of manga recently and watching uh, some anime series. First of all, I, I'm, I'm forcing myself to read. Forcing myself is that a good word? I've been reading manga a lot more. Uh, I, it, when I was in college, I had a lot of free time uh, when I wasn't going to class. <laughs> But I was watching a lot of anime, and it was great. Naruto was coming up, but I ended up getting into One Piece and watching like 200 episodes of One Piece or something. Um, but I think the thing is, now that I'm older and I have less time and I have more stuff to do, I've been enjoying manga a lot because I can get through it a lot quicker. You know, there's not the... First of all, it's just you read at your own pace. I can bam, bam, bam. I knocked out like six books of demon slayer in like a literally a weekend which you know it didn't even have to take me that long um it makes me does it does make me miss anime a little bit because i think in anime it's a little bit clearer because in manga it's all black and white like in demon slayer specifically there's one character that looks like another and they were both in the same like not in the same scene but in the same sequence together so like they're like I when I read through the manga I was like oh okay that's kind of weird why is this one person chasing this person and fighting this person and then also all of a sudden like they were two different people one person was chasing it and one person was fighting a person but they looked similar so I was like oh okay well so when I went and like kind of skipped through I skipped through the anime and just watched it a little bit and I was like oh okay well those are two different people and it's very very clear in anime because you know there's the music there's the voices which are obviously different the color the all the outfits are colored so it looks differently too yeah so but manga oh my gosh i just want to talk about well demon slayer and this there's this other uh, manga that i read uh, actually i read it like 10 years ago back in like 2008 or 9 2007 maybe and i just went back and reread it this like the last half of the book uh, of the series and it's great parasite kiseiju uh one of my probably one of my favorite manga uh god i wish i could talk about that maybe i'll just make a video talking about why it's my favorite i don't uh, i don't know because i feel like if i go in and talk about why it's my favorite there's going to be way too many sto spoilers the the reason why i like demon slayer right now because i'm reading that right now and i'm out of the books now so i'm just waiting for the next book to get released the reason why i like Demon Slayer so much, and I don't know how popular it is, manga or anime form right now in America. It's it's like selling like hotcakes in Japan, and might possibly overtake One Piece. Not in overall sales, but in like I think week to week or month to month sales or whatever. Like currently, like when a book gets released, like which book sells more kind of thing. It's like when uh, it's when like when Yokai Watch over overtook Pokemon that one year. At the McDonald's, like McDonald's was giving away Yokai Watch sale uh, toys instead of Pokemon sales because it was that big. God, Yokai Watch, I gotta. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in that too. Anyway, anyways, back back. To Demon Slayer. The reason why I like Demon Slayer so much is kind of like the same reason I like um, Suicide Squad comics because in the Suicide Squad comics, like they introduce a bunch of awesome characters, and like literally anybody can die. That's why it's called the Suicide Squad. Because they literally kill off characters at their whim. You know, sometimes it's characters you really like. Sometimes it's characters they just introduced like two seconds ago. But Demon Slayer is the same thing. I feel like there's real stakes to that. Uh, they introduced this like group that's kind of like the captains in Bleach. And I was like, oh god. Like if this ends up being like Bleach with a million different captains. E each with their own bullshit abilities. I'm going to hate Demon Slayer. But they didn't because, yeah, man, just the story, like, the story progresses. There's a little stuff going on. Maybe it's just because of the manga. Maybe it's not, like, the anime. I, I'm, I'm interested in reading the manga just to see where the filler episodes are because, god damn, filler sucks, man. I mean, I've really, really, really understood why the – really appreciate – not having filler now now that i don't have time to sit there and waste a 20 minute episode on shit that doesn't matter anyways again demon slayer is awesome uh kimetsu no yaiba if you have time you should read it i would read it first and then look at the anime because god dang dude anime has progressed so much it's so pretty 
Like, it's amazing how, like, Naruto, early Naruto looked amazing before they, like, you know, had to just pump it out and draw it simply so that they could get the anime out. But, man, like, Demon Slayer and the anime, the special effects, like, the sword effects that they have and the, and the, the action sequences, like, I don't know where, where they're going to go from here because it's just so incredible how much they've progressed. Like, this is just the regular, the norm now is to have, like, absolutely amazing. Y'all kids are super spoiled, and I was probably super spoiled. I'm going to go back and watch some of the old, old, old anime because, you know, not even, like, pre-Inuyasha kind of stuff. Like, the stuff that looks rough. I'm, I've been wanting to go back. Like, I bought the Speed Racer series a long time ago, and I'm just curious as to how bad that is going to be. <laughs> to Like, difficult to watch, that is. But anyways, okay, okay, I've been... Getting completely off topic. The reason why I like the Demon Slayer, it's a little bit too like gory for me. I don't like the gore aspects of it, but I like the fact that first of all, like the real stakes, people just die. But also, I feel like it's a story about forgiveness, which is kind of weird. Considering, like, there's a demon slayer who's going around killing demons. But, like, every demon who dies pretty much always has, like, a backstory. And it's and they, like, let you in on the backstory. And, like, why that demon became a demon. And uh, I don't think it, like, it, it doesn't make their actions okay. Or at least it shouldn't. It shouldn't make their actions okay. Like, just because you had a tragic life or a tragic backstory doesn't mean you can be a horrible person as a demon. But it does shed on shed some light, and like the last, and you still have to, and the the demon hunter uh, still has to kill them, right? But as they're dying, the demon hunter like, kind of, like, oh okay, yeah, I see why you did that. That's sad that you went through that. You know, rest in peace now. And then just there's like this forgiveness of all this horrible horrible things you did, and it's like, you know. Yeah, so it's so it's just it, it's almost like it's really hard. Oh, do I want to talk about this? I saw a tweet the other day where I don't know if you guys saw that like Adam Driver, uh, Scarlett jo- Johansson like argument they had, and they were like arguing, and uh, it's like a disgusting argument. And like somebody retweet, I saw somebody tweet about it and post the. That's the one I saw like the video, and like everybody was like, "Yeah, man, I went through a divorce. It's this is how divorce is," and you know, lots of lots of people understanding why how it is and how nasty it can get and i remember i saw one tweet that was like is anybody else find it absolutely disgusting that you know he says the most adam driver says the most horrible thing and it's like in the in the movie or whatever and scarlett johansson is like forgiving him like she's the one who forgives him and she's the one who's who goes and comforts him even though he's the one who said like i wish you were dead and this person said this and i was like I think this person completely missed the point of that scene. Because the point of the scene is to be like, like, it's more difficult to forgive somebody. That's the whole point. It is. It's more difficult to uh, to forgive somebody. Because if you just want to hold on to the grudge and, you know, keep going down this eye for an eye, gang on gang violence where you kill one of ours, we kill two of yours... And this constant, like, superseding each other, it's never going to end. But somebody's got to break the chain. And eventually, somebody's got to, like, like one side has gonna got to take the death or take the the punishment or the hurt. And then just swallow it and not re- retaliate. Right? Or otherwise, the chain's never going to break. It's just going to be this constant cycle and you're never going to get out of it. And that's, I thought that was the point of the scene. Is that he said this horrible, absolutely disgusting thing but somehow she had the strength to like go over there and not only just like not retaliate but also like put her hand on his head comforting comfortingly so that he could just like like you know like feel the sadness and get over it i thought it was i thought it was absolutely amazing that she did that and you know i think that's part of and I also don't think it's a coincidence that it was a woman to do it because I think, unfortunately, a lot of times women have to, like, like men uh, 
take on the physical burden, like actually physically like picking up stuff, but women take on like the emotional burden. Like, I don't know. This is just something that I felt that happened in my family with my mom is like my mom carried a lot of the emotional bur burden of like, you know, trying to keep the family together or like, oh, we don't have enough money this month or something like that. And her, like my mom, I feel like it was her duty to be like smile and let my dad like not have to carry like my like okay bye honey you're going to work bye and then he would leave with a clear conscience to go to work or go you know do whatever difficult thing needed to be done but deep down inside my mom was like you know she was worried and she was emotionally like uh taxed but she never showed it to my dad i feel like and so yeah that's why that's why when i saw that scene i was like yeah that i mean that seemed very natural that you know, Scarlett Johansson's character would be able to carry that burden, you know, and she was the one who went over there and just like kind of put her hand on her head, his head and, you know, and then they got over it. I don't know. I don't know what happens in that show. I don't know if they reconcile. I, I assume they don't reconcile, but I also assume that they don't like they don't go go on as like mortal enemies anymore. I don't know. Anyways, this video is getting long. There's a million things to talk about. Uh, Demon Slayer is awesome. You should go. I would recommend reading it and then after reading it, watching the anime to see to see it more fully fleshed out. Because you don't, uh, yeah, like when after you watch the anime, it's kind of hard to go back and read it because you're just missing out so much. But golly, it's so good. I'm, atonement, man. Forgiveness. You know, forgive people. Hey, it's the holidays. I did for. It's just a coincidence, I guess. But yeah, it's the holidays, man. Forgive people and. You know, you don't have to love them, but don't hold the grudge anymore. And that's what I like about Demon Slayer. <laughs> Bye.